Good morning, my beautiful friends. Every morning, sunrise is different. This morning, it's not so colourful, but you just get little tiny glimpses of colour. I'm not sure how well the colour's coming through there. Slow down so you can see. And then over the town, you get the lights and then the beautiful colourful sky. It's kind of windy outside so I thought you might not be able to hear me. So you're looking through my living room window at the moment. Here I am with my cup of tea enjoying the sunrise. Oh, and no you can't see the cat. It's too dark. Too dark to see the cat. <laughs> but the weather's been um, pretty bad. This is one of the first mornings we've had that it's actually quite nice and it's not pouring with rain. We are in the middle of winter here. And um, so I haven't been doing much gardening, so I haven't got a garden update for you, but I have been doing lots of knitting. So I thought I would share with you my sock journey. So this morning this view is definitely more interesting and you can see the river, see the reflections on the river, oh, you can see the reflections of me in the window as well. <laughs> so let's get on and have a look at some of what I have been doing and can I actually make a pair of socks that fit me? And also at the end of this video I'm going to do a bit of a mental health update two months a widow if you want to stick around and find out what's going on. If um, you're triggered by any mental health stuff you may not want to go that far but I do tell you when I'm going to start talking about that. So I'm going to enjoy my cup of tea, do a bit of knitting in my bed <laughs> and enjoy the sunrise. Hi there, Laura from God's Start Work here. Um, I've just recorded all this video and realised I didn't have my microphone on so um, I'm just trying again. <laughs> So you saw my um, beautiful sunrise this morning and it's quite a bit later this morning. In fact now it is 10.50 because I've been doing stuff and my dad came to visit and I was procrastinating about, being, uh, I was procrastinating about putting my makeup on. I haven't worn makeup in a month so this is the first time I've actually put makeup on and um, I enjoyed the process but it, it was hard to get into it. So um, I, all my socks are in a bit of a mess now because I had it all sorted and I've already been through them all because I've already taped this. <laughs> so my um, knitting journey is um, fairly recent. I, I, I know how to knit. I've known how to knit for many many years but I've never really got into it. I've knitted the odd thing and very often never finished it because it just takes way too long because I'm a sewer that's what I that that's my go-to when it comes to making clothes and one of the things I wanted to do this year which um, I did say in, in part of my goals this year was to simplify my life but I also wanted to um, make more of my own clothes so um, <laughs> I I've been knitting a lot more in the last two years because um, I wanted something to do while I was at the hospital with either my husband or my mum at the nursing home and things. and um, But it's only been in the last year that I've actually been knitting things that I like and want to wear. A lot of the time I'd knit something and then it just didn't fit quite right or I didn't really like it or you know, I just wasn't happy with it for one reason or another and I didn't want to wear it. So um, I haven't been knitting for other people very often because um, I haven't liked a lot of what I've been knitting. But in the last year I've actually knitted a couple of things that I really like and fit well and I think I'm starting to crack the knitting issues that I was having. So um, I decided to knit some socks because lots of my socks were starting to get holes in them and I was like, I'm going to need to go and buy some new socks soon. And I decided I was going to knit some instead. It's, I'm crazy like that sometimes. It was my, I want to make some of my clothes and I've never knitted socks before in my life and I'm not an expert knitter. 
Um, I'm a beginner knitter. There's a lot I don't know. <laughs> and I'd never knitted in the round, and I, all the stuff I was looking at said knitted in the round. So um, I had some wool left over from my yellow sparkly cardigan that I loved, and I decided to knit a sock. Now, this was about my fourth attempt at knitting a sock. I looked at YouTube videos and knitted a couple of toes toe up but then I couldn't find all the details on how to do the um, heel or how to measure it for your foot and I probably just didn't look hard enough but I wanted a written pattern basically because it was getting too hard to figure out but I did really like the toe, toe but that's not what I ended up doing. But I did. I have knitted a top toe, and then I unpicked it and used the wool for, for the sock. So um, I found a book on the internet, and where did I put it? It was getting started knitting socks, and all these are top down, and they but they didn't use um, the magic loop or round circulars. They used DPNs, which are double pointed needles. And I didn't want to do that. So, but what they do is they go through the gauges and tell you, okay, a super fine fingering weight for eight pinch inches per, eight stitches per inch. And then seven pit stitches per inch are super fine or sports weight fingering. So you can work out your tension and you can use the pattern that suits the tension that you are doing. So six inches per inch using fine. And mine mine is a seven inches per inch gauge. So that um, was very helpful. And then it goes into the thicker ones as well. And it does a few like twisted cable. It shows you how to do some of that. But um, I haven't done that yet. But this is the book I used to help me, and it's got details on your heel flaps, on how to do different ones, and you know, preventing holes in the gusset and stuff like that. So um, that was that was useful to a point, but I wanted I started out with magic loop, so I wanted to do magic loop. So I ended up combining that with, and I got this. A free pattern off the internet and hopefully I've done the top one. So it was the School of Socks Summerly Designs Co. Summerly Design Co. Can you probably can't see that. It's just printed off on my black and white printer. And so I didn't completely use her pattern and I did use her but I used her instruction, instructions on how to use Magic Loop. And I also used Roxanne Richardson on YouTube for how she does her gusset because she explains it really well. And she's not so like, oh, you've got to have this many stitches and that. She just shows you how to do it really easily and you don't have to be really fussy about how many stitches you have because you're decreasing them anyway. So I've, I've used a combination of three people, basically. I've used the book and I've used the printout and I've used um, Roxanne Richardson's YouTube videos to help me work out how to make a sock. So <laughs> it's nothing like doing things the hard way. So this was the first pair that I made. So there are two of them there. I don't have fancy sock blockers or anything because I'm just new. So I started three months ago making socks. So I made this pair first and I was really happy with the way they turned out until I put them on. <laughs> and, and this is 100% acrylic so it's not a warm cozy sock or anything it was just wool I had left over or yarn I had left over I should say so um, I my my gusset stitches are different like the heel flap stitches are different on each one because I think the first one I got wrong and the second one I got right and but when I put it on um, it's too short here I didn't make it long enough I thought I'd measured my toe the way it was supposed to be but it didn't work so obviously I did something wrong there so then I decided to make another pair of socks and I suppose I should show you the wool I used 
So for my yellow pair, I just used a Wendy Peter Pan double knit in moon dust. It's really, really pretty. It's got sparkles in it. I don't know whether you can, is the sparkles showing up? I can't tell. But I made a little yellow cardigan. It was kind of a shorter cardigan for summer with this. And I really liked it. I wore it a lot in summer. And I had wool left over. I've still got a ball so I could try making another pair if I wanted to. <laughs> and um, it was a learning experience. That's, that's what that was. That was my learning pair, figuring out how to do it. It didn't fit me, but oh well. <laughs> Kind of thing. And then I decided to try again because I don't like to be beaten at doing things. <laughs> and so I bought this at my local wool shop because I like to buy local as much as I can. We have two small shops in um, our little town that sell wool and so I want to support them. And one of them has actually recently changed ends and started actually selling sock wool. This, this isn't typically soft, doesn't have to be sock wool, but that's what it was, they were advertising it. And it's Gallipoli, four ply, and it's 75% wool, 25% poly made, machine washable. So, got that. And um, I wanted to try and match up how it's striped, so I got two balls and I um, unwound one ball until I got the same color striping on both and um, so this was the second pair of socks I made and I didn't get the colour striping exactly the same but they're pretty close as you can see they're, they're pretty close so they do look like a pair and um, used the same method but made it longer here but um, <laughs> these ones are too big so these ones are too big here I still wear them and all these socks that I'm showing you I have worn numerous times and I just wash them on cold in the washing machine in a lingerie bag and hang them on the line and dry them because realistically I'm not going to hand wash my socks and lay them out to dry. Mm -hmm. I just won't. Sorry. Sorry, it's my the daughter asking to be picked up but she'll just have to wait. <laughs> so that's what that one looked like. And I used a, I used all magic loop on that one, but they're a bit loose and a bit big. So then I changed and I got um, 2.75. I was using a 3.25 magic loop for those other two. Oh, and I also did a um, seven, seven knit, one pearl and a stitch on there. Which I, which I quite like. And then um, I decided I wanted to make another pair. So I made this blue pair and I did a moss stitch for the leg. And I used some acrylic. Now this is, that's, that's what I've got left over from making blue socks. So I used their acrylic there, which is the same as this one. I just haven't got the tag for the blue one. So it was Stallion 8-ply 100% acrylic. And I got that because this stuff here, which I also don't have a band for, but it's, um, it's a lullaby baby wool, and it's just wool. So I was worried that the toes and the heels would not last if um, I, I did it in that. So um, I used the other one. I, I have got more of this stuff, but I don't think it would be my first choice for using in this stuff because, I mean, it's thicker than the other wool for a start. But, um, yeah, so I, I made another pair, this blue pair, which the knitting process went really well, like try doing the gusset and the toes and figuring out the pattern and everything. That, that all went really smoothly and then I put it on and this bit here where I did the pattern was really loose compared to my other socks and um, I made it too short again <laughs> so here's one on my makeshift block socker of a piece of cardboard so that was my third attempt 
Now my fourth attempt was these pink pear. Now I made it with the same material so it's got a pink version of the lullaby wool and I did the acrylic there and you can see how the acrylic kind of is flaring out. I don't like the way that top is going but this pair fits really nicely and I changed to circular needles. I did magic loop for the top and magic loop for the bottom and I just used straight needles for this bit, the heel flap but um, I used a nine inch circular for this part and I went down the gauge. I think I used 2.75 and this fits well and I really like it and if these are clean I go for them first. And then I finally got the pattern right so I thought okay I'm going to try again. <laughs> and so I made another pair and this one's got a little pink stripe through it so that's just a fluffy pink acrylic which I was going to use for um, I was going to use it for the rib but it was way too thin and it wasn't going to work so um, I just used the main colour wool for that and um, I, I like this kind of top a lot better these ones fit well too and I was really pleased with the way they worked out sorry got a phone call so my daughter worried that I hadn't got her text that I, to come pick her up but I told her I'll be 10 more minutes just give me um, just give me some time <laughs> so um then I decided I wanted to use the rest of this blue wool so I made another pair and I brought some on impulse buy this other blue and this this is a proper sock wool that's yep. uh, 100% Marine washable merino sock bandit bandit it's called so I used that and I used the wool and it makes a lovely nice soft sock and did it stripey same pattern and um, figured out how it goes all joggy like that when the um, lines don't match up so by the time I got to the bottom of the second sock, this is the second sock, I decided, oh, I want to see if I can make the rounds not joggy, jogless stripes, <laughs> which I didn't know was a term until I started looking it up. And I tried various different methods through here, and none of them were working very well. And then in the last few stripes, you can see I actually got them to line up. And now I can't remember what I did. I hope I wrote it down because <laughs> I can't remember how I did that now. But I did figure it out, so I know I can figure it out again. <laughs> but it took me the whole two socks to do that. So that worked out really well. And I thought, okay, I know what I'm doing with socks now. And so I started this pair. It's middle of winter here, so I wanted a dark pair. When I put that up close, it's quite um, pale well, it doesn't look pale, but it looks more pale than it is back here. You can probably see it's quite a dark wool, and it's up quite dark. I'm really happy with the way these are coming out. It's beautiful. I haven't got the tag for this one, so when I've finished the sock, I'll show you. I'll have to do it. But it's quite a thin wool. It, it, it knits up quite delicate feeling. So for the heel gusset and the heel turn, I actually doubled the wool there to make it a bit thicker and sturdier. But I decided for the next pair, when I've finished this pair, I want to make um, toe up because I really liked the toe that I practiced when I very first started my sock journey. And also doing the gusset and that is a bit of a, it's always a bit that puts me off because you have to pick up stitches and that. And it's, it's not that hard, but it's just annoying. And I saw on YouTube a few people doing the German short rows on a heel toe toe up and there was no gusset or you know no stitches to pick up or anything so that's going to be my next journey now um yeah so that'll be my next sock journey i have got some other things on the go which i can show you at another time and um i'm gonna 
stop talking about socks here and I just want to do a quick update I said I was going to do um, two months a widow thing I don't want to make it a whole separate video I haven't got that much to say <laughs> but um, some of this could be a bit triggering so if, if you're sensitive to things mental health stuff and that then you may not want to watch this but so um, second month I did a one month widow second month was very up and down so I, I started the second month and thought yeah I'm not doing that great and um, I went back on antidepressants I'd been off antidepressants for about four months before Paul died and because um, I'd been on them a long time dealing with him being sick in there and I decided I was doing quite well mentally and I'd go off them and I was doing well until you know about one month and after he died and then I was like oh I might need a little bit of help to you know make sure I can get out of bed and do all that kind of stuff and um so I went back on my antidepressants the same dose same brand same everything and it did not go well at all I was on them for two weeks and I just got worse and worse and just there was absolutely no joy in my life at all there was I'd open the curtains and see the nice sunrise and go oh yeah whatever and I was just in despair I was starting to worry myself I was starting to see why people would commit suicide and that I was just not in a good place at all and I was shutting myself down and I wasn't doing anything apart from knitting <laughs> and I just nothing seemed worth it I think I'm triggering myself now so um then I forgot to take it one day and then in the evening I felt so much better and I was like okay this is interesting and I stopped taking it and I've been so much better since I have stopped taking it yes I am still sad and I still cry and but I still find joy and satisfaction in things like I can open the curtains and see a si nice sunrise light this morning and go oh that's really pretty or you know, I can finish a sock and do a job well done and think oh yeah you know, I learnt something and this this worked instead of just being totally shut down and no good emotions at all so um, I was really glad that I forgot to take it <laughs> and it's taken me a couple of weeks to kind of get back on track I feel like now I'm just starting to get back on track and starting to heal again rather than just trying to get over feeling completely destroyed <laughs> so um, yeah so you know word of caution if you go on antidepressants and you feel worse maybe you shouldn't be taking them <laughs> so uh, at the moment I'm not on anything I just feel like I need to work through the process naturally now um, not always sleeping well but um, yeah some nights better than others and if I've been busy and productive during the day then I'm probably likely to sleep better um, I had, had an interesting development just after Paul died is that my hair was falling out from stress and I think it's just about stopped but <laughs> this is how thin it is like if I put it on a ponytail there's just there's nothing there <laughs> but it is growing back I can feel it little bits growing back now so it really feels weird on my head but yeah my I would just go like this and I'd have hair like this one there but there was just it was coming out like crazy because of just mental stress my, my whole body was stressed out <laughs> so um I wasn't expecting that but you know it's something to look out for when you get really stressed I know um, if you go on a diet or anything it stresses your body and your hair can fall out but um, I wasn't expecting it for emotional stress so <laughs> it is growing back though it's just really thin at the ends at some point I'll probably have to cut them off but I'm not ready to do that yet <laughs> so um, that is my update and now I have to go and pick up my daughter because otherwise she's going to start complaining that I took too long and I told her I'd only be 10 minutes and I'm sure I've been longer than that already <laughs> so it was really good to see you and um, I hope that 
you don't mind that I'm not doing makeup at the moment. I, I put my makeup on to, today and it's the first time I put it on in a month. I can't remember if I mentioned that at the beginning or not since it's the second time I did it. But I just wanted to show you what I have been up to, which is knitting. I have been knitting some other things apart from socks, but um, I think I'll show those in a different video and see how we go. So you all have a good day and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.